Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. CMU 1.15.2 is now released for all CMU emulator Patreons. If you are yourself a patron, you can find a download link for it down in the description of this video. Since this new version was released for patrons on the 28th of January, this of course means that the free version is going to go live for everybody on February the 4th. Now that it's actually released, we can go over its detailed changelog to discuss exactly what's going to be changing, and as well as this a little bit later on in the video, I'm going to be doing a quick benchmark of every single demanding area in Breath of the Wild to compare the performance when moving from version 1.15.1 to this new version 1.15.2. On top of this, I'll be also doing follow-up videos to these performance benchmarks where we'll be taking a look at many other games. So as usual, if there are any games you'd like to see tested on this new version, leave them down below this video in a comment. Okay, so let's quickly take a look at everything that has changed and that is going to be changing in this new emulator version. First of all, we have some CPU JIT optimizations. CMU no longer recompiles dynamic code regions since it doesn't handle iCache invalidation properly yet. We've been told that this change has been mainly made to prevent browser-based apps from crashing. An example of a browser-based app would be the eShop app for browsing the Nintendo eShop or indeed the friends list application which allows you to add different friends for utilization on the emulator. Moving on to some GX2 or graphical base changes, they have completely overhauled the upscaling and downscaling output filter system on a CMU. As you can see in this CMU window, they have completely added two separate options for both upscaling and downscaling, as well as adding two brand new filtering modes, Hermite and Nearest Neighbor. In my limited testing so far, this Nearest Neighbor filter setting seems to be the best one, but as I said, I've had a very, very limited time with this emulator version so far, and when I'm doing my further compatibility testing in the next few days, I will figure out exactly which one looks best, and exactly which one you guys should be using. On top of all this, they have also given us custom graphics pack modes which will enable us to use any and all of these brand new filtering modes and when you pair these changes with all of the graphics pack changes we've seen in the last two versions of CMU, these are some very very nice quality of life changes indeed. Staying on GX2 and graphical changes, they have optimized the performance of the high GPU buffer cache accuracy setting. While this option and change may not sound like big news to any of you guys, it actually is very, very significant, especially so when you consider that games like The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD, Xenoblade Chronicles X, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, and The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess all utilize this buffer cache accuracy setting, and all of these games are going to see a 20-25% to performance increase when using this brand new emulator version and setting. Yet another game that takes advantage of this buffer cache accuracy setting is Super Smash Bros for Wii U or Super Smash Bros 4, whatever you want to call it. Considering the popularity and just how good this game is running on this emulator already, getting a further 20-25% to performance boost on such a big game on this emulator, especially so on much, much lower end PCs that may, even at this point, struggle to get 60 FPS is a very, very welcome change indeed. The final GX2 or graphical change we're seeing in this version is the fact that they have completely fixed the V-Sync option in CMU emulator, basically meaning that it's now no longer going to do nothing and going to work as intended. This is a very, very welcome change and definitely a godsend to anyone who experiences extreme screen tearing in any of their games. Instead of having to use their GPU specific settings in their GPU specific control panels, they are now going to just be able to turn on a V-Sync inside of CMU and forget about everything else. Okay, so moving on to some AX or some audio changes we're going to be seeing, they have added full and complete support for gamepad audio output. As you can see in this window, you now have specific and separate controls for both your TV and your gamepad audio device, meaning you can separately bind them to different audio devices on your computer, or obviously if you're playing a game that doesn't require or have any gamepad audio at all, you can just leave it disabled. This brand new gamepad audio change is going to mean that Star Fox Zero is now fully playable with gamepad audio on CMU 1.15.2. And, as I've already said, if there are any games that you want me to test this gamepad audio in, let me know down below this video in a comment. On top of this brand new audio mode, they have also fixed incorrect loop handling for PCM8 and PCM16 voices, as well as minor fixes for voice protection. Moving away from audio once again and onto some input related changes in 1.15.2, they have fixed a bug where controller settings reset when a controller was not connected on emulator launch. This change may sound like a very, very small one, but it's 
really one of those little niggling bugs that has just been bothering me for so long. I literally couldn't even count the amount of times at this stage that I've launched CMU, launched a game with my mouse and then realized my controller wasn't connected. This would then force me to open my input settings window, make sure I have my correct profile loaded and it was just probably one of the most annoying things that happens and I am so glad that they have finally fixed this annoying bug. Moving on to some VPAD changes, they have set the VPAD volume according to gamepad volume from general settings, and they have also fixed a bug where the control sticks would become too sensitive in certain circumstances. Hopefully this is going to fix the issues that many CMU users were having with the range settings in the last few emulator versions. Okay, so that's it for any of the changes we've seen in 1.15.2, let's move on to some benchmarks and take a look at how the performance has changed in the most demanding game on CMU emulator, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. As I already said guys, I'm going to be doing a further compatibility and performance testing in many of the games I've already listed in this video, and I'll reiterate it again, if you want any other games tested, please, please let me know down below in a comment. So all testing in these benchmark areas was done using the 1080p resolution graphics pack. The only other packs I'm using are FPS++, the Surfrost Bright Clarity preset, LWZX to stop any crashing that may potentially happen, and finally the last pack I'm using is the Kakariko Torch Shadow Fix, which fixes the square shadows that appear around the torches in Kakariko Village. All testing was done on brand new and freshly set up emulator versions in order to remove any possible issues that could happen between benchmarking runs, and while the performance difference you're seeing right here in Zora's Domain is not indicative of all of the performance you're going to see in every single area, I can indeed confirm that we are seeing a better performance in 1.15.2. The testing methodology I used in this video was basically to leave both versions open and running for 2 hours, and then I began my performance testing doing runs over and over again trying to see exactly what kind of difference in performance I am seeing in these areas. So while performance in a CMU emulator, especially in relation to doing benchmark runs like you see in these videos, is very very hard to get accurate numbers for, as I already said I do multiple multiple runs just like the ones you're seeing right now and then I take kind of the average performance numbers and display them in the video just like this in this benchmark run. What I'm basically trying to say to you guys is that from time to time you will see higher and lower performance in both CMU 1.15.1 and in 1.15.2, however the differential in performance that you see in these average runs is generally completely accurate. If you yourself have access to 1.15.2 please do let me know down in the comment section if you're seeing a boosted performance just like I'm seeing in Breath of the Wild or indeed in any other game you play on this emulator. For the remainder of this video, I'm going to leave you with some additional benchmarking scenes and hopefully everything I've shown you and explained in this video is going to help you make up your mind as to whether you need to update or upgrade your CMU emulator version. As usual guys, I will be doing my full and complete setup guide for CMU version 1.15.2 in the coming days and once we have figured out all of the best settings to give you the best possible experience on this emulator, I will release that guide. Once again guys, cheers for checking out this video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.